Welcome to the Scooby panel. I'm Nikki Blake from ScoobyAddicts.com, and today we're going to be talking about Scooby-Doo and the Mystery Pups, which was announced today. And before we begin, I'll have everybody introduce themselves. Bradford, we'll start with you. Hi, I'm Bradford Smith. Uh, I have a website where I have Scooby scripts, and I'm a new dad. Awesome. Wendy? I'm Wendy Bridge. I'm a commission artist and a 30 plus year Scooby-Doo collector. And I have to say congratulations to Bradford because that's super exciting. And I'm really glad that you're on the panel tonight. Thanks. Cameron? Hey guys, I'm Cameron. I run Scooby-Doo and Cameron too. I'm a, a lifelong Scooby-Doo fan and collector and I'm just really excited to be here. And yes, congratulations, Bradford. I'm really happy for you. I know you're going to, you, I'm just like, you're going to make a great father. Like I'm just, I'm excited Thanks. for you. You're welcome. I was excited that he was available tonight because his daughter will be how old when this comes two. out? She'll be two when this comes out. So it's mm -hmm. like the perfect age. Yeah. So we'll get the perspective of somebody that this show is actually targeted for. So that's really cool. I'm going to go through just the information that we know about the show already, and then we can talk about it. So we know that it's called Scooby-Doo and the Mystery Pups, and it was announced today by Cartoon Network and HBO Max. In the article, it stated that it is produced by Warner Brothers Animation and CGI Animated Adventure Comedy Series finds the iconic best pals as camp counselors who lead a possum new crew on mystery solving adventures at sleepaway camp. And then it went on to say the show combines everything we love about Scooby, his humor, his loyal friendship with Shaggy, his mystery loving spirit, all in an innovative and accessible format for preschoolers. So we've never had a Scooby preschool show before. And I think we've even talked about this on a panel or in a discussion that there's never been a preschool show. So it's kind of interesting that they're finally making one. We know that Frank Walker is gonna voice Scooby-Doo and Matthew Lillard is gonna voice Shaggy. Sam Register and Mark Palmer will be executive producers and Eric Knutson will be the supervising producer. And then the series is gonna premiere in 2024. And I'm gonna just read the synopsis. It says, as counselors at a lakeside sleepaway camp, Scooby and Shaggy don't know much about canoes and archery but they do know how to solve a mystery. In a summer filled with nature hikes, rafting trips, and fireside ghost stories, the goofy, good-hearted, and can-do duo will share their love for chasing clues with three young camper pups destined to become their own preschool version of Mystery Incorporated. Featuring mysteries that will be more kooky than spooky, Scooby-Doo and the Mystery Pups teaches preschoolers about curiosity and the joy of discovery. The show will encourage the audience to solve clues alongside the collaborative trio of pups, exemplifying how much can be accomplished with friends by your side. It sounds perfect for Scooby. <laughs> and then this was the image that was released. So people are saying that the dogs kind of resemble Velma because of the glasses and Daphne because of the bow. So what are your thoughts, Bradford? I really want to know your thoughts because you are a new dad. And like I said, this is like geared towards you. So yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to see, see this show come together. It sounds like, you know, maybe a little bit of like blues clues mixed with what that what's new Scooby-Doo episode come, camp come on. I want to scare you or whatever, where it's mm -hmm. just Shaggy and Scooby, which I mean, that's, I don't know if I'm too thrilled that the rest of the gang's not involved, but Everybody loves Shaggy and Scooby, so I think that'll be a nice introduction for my daughter to get into the show, and she'll be two. So, I mean, that's the right kind of age, I think, to have a little bit of an attention span. <laughs> yeah, definitely. She'll have a, a short attention span, but... <laughs> Cameron, you have a new niece, and you have your nephew. What are, what are your thoughts? Do you think this would be good for them? I really do. Um, I have been excited all day about this. Um, I know it's not really a show geared to us, it's geared for little ones around the world, but um, I think it's good. I, I think it's um, it's fresh. It's a fresh take. 
uh, you know, my, my little cousin, or excuse me, my little cousin, my little nephew, uh, he watches Paw Patrol. And, um, and so I kind of feel like this show is kind of, kind of be the same animated format as Paw Patrol, you know, and, um, I've never really had anything against Paw Patrol. I mean, I, of course, I'm always just like trying to shove Scooby-Doo towards him. I'm like, oh, you want to watch Paw Patrol? Well, here's Scooby-Doo, where are you? And he's like, but okay, we'll just watch Scooby-Doo. I'm like, well, smart, smart kid. But like, I just, I've, I've always loved Scooby-Doo. Um, I, you know, I also read a lot, a lot of comments that people were like, I hate that it's coming out now because when I was a kid, I wish I had something like this. Well, I kind of feel like when we were kids, we got a pup named Scooby-Doo. You know, I know it wasn't like toddler or preschooler based, but still it was like, you know, the, the gang as kids. Um, I know in this this series, I think it's I think it's a fun setting, you know, a camp, you know, and, and it, I just think it's going to be a lot of fun for little ones. Um, you know, my niece was born this year uh, and my nephew, or excuse me, yeah, my nephew, he is two years old right now. So he will be four. And she'll be two. So I'm excited. I think it'll be a great little series, you know, for Bradford's kids, for my nephew and niece, and, you know, for other little ones. And I think Bradford hit it right on top of the head. It's going to be a great introduction, you know, for kids to jump into Scooby-Doo, you know what I mean? And, and share that love. And, uh, and I mean, like I said, when I first saw it, I was excited. I know a lot of people, like you said, a lot of people are saying, oh, the dogs resemble, you know, Velma, Fred, and Daphne. Well, I don't think they, I mean, I know they kind of look like them, but I don't think they're going to be, I think there's going to be three just random pups. But I also will say this too. I mean, and I, I don't know if Warner Brothers would take this and run with it, but I think it would be so cool to bring in, and I know we've, we've always said this, but like scooby Dum, Scooby-Dee, Scrappy-Doo, Yabba-Doo. I mean, just to have these like other dogs come to camp, you know, that would be really stinking cool. Dino, my dog wander. I mean, so I think there's a lot of potential for the show. I think it's great that they're gearing it towards little ones because, you know, it's um, it's exciting that we got a, a new project of Scooby-Doo. I always love when a new project comes out. You know, it may not be what I want or the greatest or whatever, but today sound, today I was excited. I mean, I'm excited more because I've got little ones in my family that I'm able to, you know, sit down and actually watch it with them without someone walking in and going, why are why are you watching the preschooler show? And I'm like, just leave me alone. <laughs> I'll actually have little ones right next to me. So I'll be like, oh, I'm just watching it for the kids. Wink, wink. But um, but no, I'm excited. I think it's going to be a good project. Um, yeah, I think I think they're I think they did really well with this. So I'm excited to see. I I, I just I will say I, I am a little bummed that it's going to be until 2024. I kind of wish it was going to be like later this year or next year, early next year. But you know. Good things come for those who wait. So we will wait. And uh, I think kids will be really excited about this. I was surprised that they announced it now when it's not coming out until 2024. But it's, I think it looks like an interesting show. I mean, if my kids were little, we'd be watching it. Now I have to watch it myself because I don't have any little kids. <laughs> come to Texas, Nikki. We'll make it work. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy what are your thoughts yeah I mean I, I can't complain about it you know it's certainly better than the news about Velma I mean I can definitely get behind this project a little bit more than that um since I don't have any kids or any little kids in any not my family or anything like that I will comment on the fact that I find the timing of this very interesting given that number one that Velma image just came out like less than a week ago. And there's been a lot of, you know, talk online about that. And I was a little bit surprised at the image we got for this new series because it is strangely missing Scooby. Mm -hmm. So this is purely just conjecture and I'm just talking, but I am curious just how far along the development of this series actually is right now the date that we're filming this because I'm wondering if there was so much backlash for that Velma image that they rushed to do a little bit of damage control by announcing a series that I mean I guess it must have already been green lit for them to to talk about it today but that that initial image for it very much seems like something that they just threw together at the last second and they're like, get it out there. It says Scooby-Doo, but there is no Scooby-Doo. It doesn't matter as long as it says Scooby. 
you know what I mean? Like that's, that's the goal. So I would be, I would be very interested to know exactly like right now on the day that we're filming, how far along was this new preschool Scooby-Doo series? Because I have a sneaking suspicion that it uh, very much still conceptual given its two year premiere date, um, which I'm not complaining about it. You know what I mean? I, if, if it is true that there was so much backlash for Velma, then I actually applaud the general public for, for doing that and WB taking notice and trying to do some kind of damage control. If that is the case, I actually think that's really, really great um, that they would go in this direction and be like, okay, maybe we need to like backtrack a little bit on, on our thoughts for future Scooby. Uh, I definitely still think that regular Scooby is completely appropriate for preschool kids. I really do. I, I don't, I wouldn't shy away from like letting my kids watch regular Scooby-Doo, but I think that they could do something fun. It does sound like it'll be a little bit interactive, which little kids always really, really like. And my only hope is that they don't dumb it down too much because yeah. I feel like a lot of children's shows, especially in the last decade, they're getting really like, they're really dumbing it down and kids are not dumb. A two-year-old is not dumb. They are like little sponges. They soak up everything that is around them. So I really think that a lot of people do a disservice to children by treating them like they're not smart enough yet to understand something and giving them something with like no substance to watch when like, no, that's the time where you want to be giving them in good information, you know, get their minds working. That's you know, two to four, anything in that age group, do it. That's the time that you want to be like giving them stuff. And that's how you end up with a kid that's very mature, even when they're young. So I really just hope that they don't, they don't dumb it down too much, you know, like, yes, it's aimed at preschoolers, but let's remember that they're not dumb. They don't need something to be, you know what I mean? Like they'll understand, make it, make it proper they'll understand and hopefully they can they can get something out of it and i hope it'll be a great enough series that when they get a little bit older they'll want to graduate to the scooby that we know and love and they'll just pick up on all of the classic series that we grew up on and everyone can have something i did show my kids regular scooby obviously because Mm -hmm. you know, preschool Scooby didn't exist. And that was fine because to me, you know, we watched Blue's Clues. We watched, uh, we watched Phineas and Ferb a lot because I could tolerate that show. A lot of the shows that are on for kids, I can't tolerate. So I wouldn't sit and watch them with my kids. So they kind of didn't watch them either. But yeah, I, I would, I would show them any version of Scooby really. Um, mm -hmm. except Velma when that comes out that I would not have shown them that but yeah yeah Bradford would you show your kids other versions of Scooby or yeah um I try I tried to show my daughter <laughs> we were watching one of the Harlem Globetrotters episodes of the new Scooby-Doo movies and nice. she watched it for a little bit and then she fell asleep so she's only only a couple months old so that don't blame her for that but she she did her best um but she she is able we want there's a show called bluey that's got a dog mm -hmm. in it and she will sit and kind of watch that but i think it's i mean it's very like general like colors and stuff i think is more what attracts her to it but that's a show that like you were saying with phineas and ferb it has some humor and stuff that like parents can can get it and kind of enjoy watching it versus like um some of those other ones that were a little harder i believe they also have australian accents right i think it's an australian show yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so my dog's name is blue and my husband and i actually watched an episode of that just because of our dog <laughs> You. Anyway, <laughs> anybody have anything else that they want to say about Scooby-Doo and the Mystery Pubs? Well, 
I thought it was interesting. Are they going to be CG animated in this one? I, uh, the I article just, says CGI animated. So this is like the first CGI series of Scooby then, right? Like we haven't had one of those before, yeah. as far as I can remember. Yeah. So I, I you think it's going to be similar to Scoob? Or you think they're going to go a different direction with it? I could see it being more like the style of Paw Patrol. I don't yeah. know if that's CGI animated. I have no idea, but I could see them doing something more like that. Just seeing the tops of the pups heads, like when on the poster, it, it looks like it's going to be like Paw Patrol. And y'all right. think about it too, like Paw Patrol. And I mean, I remember, I forgot where it was, but I saw like a statistic of it or something, but like that show has done phenomenal because mm -hmm. like kids just gravitate towards dogs, any cartoon dogs. And I think that's another reason why Scooby-Doo's done so. I mean, if you just stop, I think Scooby-Doo is just the ultimate cartoon because I mean, think, look how many shows he's had. Look how many movies he's had. I mean, 50 years and still going strong. I mean, that's just pretty, pretty dang impressive, y'all. You know, and now we're having a little kid show. I, I, I mean, I just think that's pretty incredible if you ask me. Yeah. Bradburn, you had said something about them balancing it out because they did announce Velma that this is kind of like ba a balance to bring peace back to the community. <laughs> yeah, like when, just like Wendy was saying, yeah, I think I think it is. I mean, I don't know, yeah, if they announced it because of the backlash, but I do think it was likely in development to try to help balance out the scale a little bit. Because, um, yeah, because kids, kids want a new Scooby-Doo to watch, mm. you know, so... It gives them something. Yeah. And I think Scooby-Doo would make a good preschool show. You know, it, it's a dog and his best friend. I mean, what better way to teach kids about friendship than Scooby and Shaggy, who have been best friends for 52 years, you know? So, yeah. We could plug, plug that old episode as a panel about life lessons. Yeah, because it, it'd be great. All those, <laughs> all those things, just plug all those into the show. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> we'll have to send that to uh, Cartoon Network and HBO Max, and there they you can go. they can add some of that stuff in there. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. That's really great that they're having Matthew Lillard do Shaggy's voice, though. I mean, obviously Frank is Scooby too, but. Um, you know, Frank was in Scoob. Mm -hmm. Matthew wasn't. So I, I'm, I'm really glad that they're, they're sticking because I mean, he's like Casey Kasem will always be Shaggy for me, but Matthew Lillard has more than like earned his stripes with that character. He's been doing yeah. it for so long now that I think he has just as much right to it uh, as anybody else. And so I'm, I'm glad to see that they're, they're keeping that pairing and that he's going to get to be a part of this. And I don't know, part of me kind of feels like they're going to have to keep it kind of like in the Scooby line with Matthew in it. Like, I think if they were going to try and deviate somehow and do something that maybe we wouldn't like as much that they would have gone with somebody different than who all the kids know as Shaggy right now. Right. Um, and let's not also, I mean, we are, we are adults talking about this who have like just a mild obsession with Scooby-Doo. Uh, the potential for merchandise is there. Yeah. Uh, I, I was just thinking that. <laughs> we keep talking about the comparison with Paw Patrol and I cannot get out of my mind. Uh, I watch Pixel Dan on YouTube all the time and he has the cutest little boy, Spencer. And every year they do Advent Calendar Madness uh, during December. And Dan and Stina, his wife and Spencer, they each get a different Advent calendar, like a toy one. And every single day they open, you know, whatever the Advent toy is. And he had a Paw Patrol calendar a few years ago. And it was actually awesome. It was all like these little figures of all of them. And like, they looked accurate to the cartoon. They weren't like some kind of derpy knockoffs. Like they were really awesome. And while those advent calendars are not cheap, I mean, we did bring up the idea of Christmas advent calendars on a previous panel for Scooby. Uh, I think everyone here would very much enjoy a Scooby-Doo advent calendar, even if it is like baby 
mm-hmm. Scooby stuff with like other dogs and everything, I think we would still probably buy it. So there's there's potential there for some merchandise, I think, to, to make the adult collector happy too. <laughs> So we go from regu- shopping in the regular toy aisle to the preschool <laughs> toy aisle. I love it. <laughs> oh, excuse me, sir. I'm just here to get the Scooby-Doo toys and I'm out. <laughs> oh, it's funny. We could potentially get a lot more merchandise for this show than a pup named Scooby-Doo ever had. So good point. Yeah. It's exciting. Yeah. So we're going to wrap this up. Let us know your opinion of the show in the comments below. And thanks for joining us for another panel.